Barkley? Yes. I'm, uh, I'm Wilmer. Wilmer Hammett. I'm the one that sent the telegram. Well, I'm grateful to you for your kindness. Well, a man ain't got a right to call himself neighbor. He ain't helpful. Uh, the house is right up the street. Well, we still can't believe it happened. The Millers were the best you could find. Their girl, Elaine. Uh, she was so pretty. So happy to have your daughter visiting. Well, that's... That's where we buried them. You know, it's hard as blazes to walk by without wanting to go after those pigs that murdered them and then... Well, I guess I'm getting too old for that. But if there's a just God, someday somebody will catch them. They'll get their due. Why did they kill the Millers? Was there any reason? Well, Sam... Mr. Miller, that is. Sam was still alive when we got there. But she wasn't able to say much, except uh, they were drunk, broke in the house, figuring to find money. And when they didn't, they, they just went mad. Tortured him first. Elaine, well, they used a knife on Elaine before they, before they shot him. Where was my daughter? I found her in the attic bedroom. Thank God they didn't know she was there. I'd like to see her now, please. Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Of course. Audra. Audra, I'm so good. Audra. Didn't you tell her? Tell me what? Well, I... I tried. The shock. She must have seen what happened. She can't hear or talk. It's like she never saw any of us before. Audra? Oh, my God. several times, Mr. Lassiter. Well, it ain't helping it to sink in any better by the repeating of it, is it? We're all on the same short water ration, same as me. All on account of the same stupidity of this your stage line. You're all acting like I'm first cousin to a local weed because I'm the only one that's got sense enough to holler about it. Well, seeing as we're practically nose to nose, maybe you ought to stop hollering just out of respect to the ladies. My hollering ain't going to bother that girl now, not with what ain't her. Why don't you shut up? ain't that I don't have feelings for her sickness, ma'am, or respect for you. It's just that when something riles me, I gotta let it out. Well, I think you've done just that, Mr. Lassiter. But no amount of complaining will fix a leaky water barrel or replace the water we lost, will it? No, complaining won't do that, no. But if we all stuck together, all right, we might be able to get back half of our bear. Why, Mr. Lassiter, I'm disappointed in you. A man who owns his own gold mine... Nuggets sticking out of his pockets? I suppose it's the business of a professional gambler to know what's in everybody's pockets, Mr. Matson, but 
You ain't going to be any more hopeful of getting me into a stud poker game in Stockton as you was back in the depot waiting for this stage. Well, if everybody was as astute as you are, Mr. Lassiter, I would have to find myself a new occupation, which no doubt would be good for my soul, but would certainly deprive my spirit. Okay. I suggest we all just uh, keep quiet and allow Mrs. Barkley and her daughter to get a little rest. Thank you very much, Mr. Madsen. But please don't let our presence interfere with your pleasure. My daughter and I have overcome bigger problems. Oh! Oh! Stopping for water rations? We're stopping for a lame horse. You can all get out and stretch your legs. Miss Barkley, I uh, make it my business to mind my own, but I just can't help thinking a girl as beautiful as your daughter certainly should be blessed with a voice to match. She has a beautiful voice. I've been on some hard luck trips in my life, but this beats it. Fool horse picked up a pebble under his shoe. Now, you ain't gonna stop to rest him, are you? I gotta be in Stockton tomorrow. I ain't resting him. I'm leaving him. He can't hardly touch ground with that hoof. But we're three hours late already. And you're gonna be later. All right, everybody. Half a cup of water each. No more. And let's make it fast. I haven't had enough trouble. Now we gotta lose a horse. Hey, 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 hey. You heard the man. Half a cup. This is for the women. Can't hold them to half rations. Miss Barkley? When she finishes this, uh, I'll bring you some more. Well, it seems to me you brought us our full quota. I'll share it with her. Well, nobody minds if the women have a bit more. We do. But thank you just the same. Audra, I have some water for you. Now, Audra, I know you're thirsty. And we're not going to get any more water for a long time. So please turn around and you can have some. Audra? Let's head him up. Come on, you yeah! Short of water, driver. We're short of water, and we're shy of horse. You can't expect this stage land to be worried about that. Well, now, Mr. Lassiter, the company figured there'd be days like this when there'd be lame horses and leaky water kegs and bothering and complaining passengers, so they set up relay stations. There's one maybe 10, 15 miles down the trail. Well, why didn't you say so? Why didn't you ask? Let me help you, ladies. fascinating game of chance, Roy, is a game called Chemin de Fer. You won't find that game played in any of the army barracks or in the saloons. Europe is where they play that game. Europe, where they never even heard of five-card stud. And that's where I'm going to take my woman when we get married. Got a nice sound to it, don't it? Honeymoon in Europe. You contemplating marriage, Mr. Lester? I didn't know that. Oh, yes. That's why I'm going to Stockton. That's where she's waiting for me. Hmm. Man spends 20 years getting rich, and in one second, just long enough to say I do, he loses half his fortune. Perhaps that one second will enrich his life far more than a gold mine. Well, now that depends upon the woman, Mrs. Barkley. That depends upon the woman. Takes a woman to recognize quality. Now, wouldn't you say she had quality, ma'am? Ah, oh, yes, she's lovely. Congratulations. Hey, we got company. Hey! Hey, let that fella catch up with us. Let him ride inside. 
Hitch up another horse. Uh, uh, uh. I don't think he plans on joining us. Well, all right. It's gonna be so doggone private. Mr. Lasseter, I suggest you get it out. I'm a prospector, not a gambler. I never had any need of weapons. Well, you've been lucky so far. I sincerely hope your luck holds out. Ooh. What's he waiting for? Why don't he make a play if, he, if he's going to rob us? Maybe he's not interested in the same things you are, Mr. Lasseter. What does that mean? Well, he may have things on his mind other than gold. There are many reasons a man might use a gun. Nobody's riding shotgun on the stage, so he's got to know we're not carrying a strong box. I've got 3,000 in gold nuggets on me. If he comes at me, I'll give $500 to the one who cuts him down. $500. Well, if he is interested in money, I think he's after higher stakes. Mrs. Barkley is a rich woman. She'd bring a big ransom. You'd have to climb over me. And I don't need no offer of pay, either. Seems to me I spend the best part of this journey thanking you. That soldier suit sure gives you a lot of guts, don't it, Sonny? Now, maybe everybody's right. Maybe he don't want money. Maybe he just wants revenge. Maybe he's a breed out there under those white man's clothes, looking for revenge for the massacre of his tribe that you soldier boys pulled off. I never massacred nobody. I never had this uniform on until three days ago. I just signed up and I got a two-week furlough before I have to report. Mr. Lassiter, you haven't said one right word since you got on this stage. Well, maybe this is the right one. Maybe he's after you. Maybe you second-carded him in a poker game and won his ranch. Or hearing your low opinion of women, maybe you ruined his sister or took his wife. Maybe you'd like to get your head blown off. <laughs> Put up the gun, Matson. You're scaring the girl. I, I didn't mean nothing. I didn't mean nothing. Put up that gun, I said. Stay out of this, Roy. Wouldn't you say, gentlemen, that the rider out there is getting just what he wants? We're at each other's throats. Hey, he's gone. Well, we scared him off. Now we'll have fresh horses and water and... Oh, now I never was one to hold grudges, and I ain't too stubborn to, to make apologies. <laughs> we, we, now we got 10 or 12 hours before Stockton. I say let's just forget all these little disagreements. That's better, Mr. Lester. Relay station! Water's over there. It's awful quiet. Suits me fine. Hey! Anybody? Speak up! 
up if you're here. Nobody around. Horses are gone, too. Been salted. Look. You better get inside. It's just sitting out there on that ridge like a vulture. Well, we'll just sit right here and out waiting. I'll see if I can find something to eat. Lasseter? How about a nice, uh, friendly game of cards? Somebody has a match, I'll put a fire under it. Here you are, man. Oh. Audra? Hmm. You can bet your bottom dollar that leak in the water keg was no accident. What about that pebble that lamed our lead horse? <laughs> well, you're all talking kind of crazy, like that fellow's some kind of a magician or something. Like he can be in all places at one time, like, like, like he knows every move we make. You in the cabin! You won't get hurt, you do what you're told. I want the girl. Leave the girl, the rest of you can ride out, else you'll all die. <laughs> These will be ready in a few minutes. You recognize it? You've been shopping at Chef's ever since it opened, just before you left for High Ridge. Remember, you bought Nick a pair of silver spurs there because he stayed up two nights helping you fold Betsy. Uh, Nick is your brother, and you'll be seeing him soon, and you'll be seeing your other two brothers, Jared and Pig. Oh, Audra. Audra, Audra, I know what you've been through. It was a nightmare. But it's over now. It's all over. You can't shut your mind off forever. Audrey, you are going to listen to me. I am going to make you remember. Now listen to me. Now, we'll start at the beginning. You were in the attic bedroom. Two drunken cowboys broke into the house. And when they couldn't find what they wanted, they tortured the millers. They used a knife on the lane. Nothing could stop them. And then they killed them. Now face it. Face it. They killed them in cold blood. They would have killed you too. But they couldn't find you. But you're safe now. You're here with me and you're safe. And I won't let anybody hurt you. I'm going to take you home. Home to the family that loves you. I... Oh, God. Oh. God. You stink to high heaven, Lassiter. Well, why should we give up our lives for some girl we never laid eyes on three days ago? Well, that's what we're all thinking, ain't it? 
Oh, shut up, will you? Now let the man talk. Man's got a right to talk. Anyways, look at it. She can't understand a word we're saying. Do you, honey? Trick, Matson. Now, how about making that rider disappear? She don't know sun up from a high wind. I say we ought to do what that fella out there says. Leave her here and we ride on. Well, how do we know? Maybe he don't mean her any harm. Uh, who'd want to hurt a girl who, who ain't, well, well, ain't all there? Why would anybody want to send a girl who ain't all there? to whatever's outside that's turning some men's backbone into sawdust. If you weren't her ma, you'd feel the same as the rest of us. As you? Us, not counting the soldier boy. Now, he can believe all the mush he's fed about protecting the flag and the female race. But for me, I say you got no right asking the rest of us to stick our necks out. What do you say, Mr. Matson? Ma'am, I'm waiting for my ration of water so I can wash down these beans. Not that they're not cooked to a turn, ma'am. Is that all you can think of? No, Roy, Mr. Matson's right. He's a practical man. It is time for our water ration. Well, the water barrel's still on the stage. There should be enough in that to go around. You are about to express an opinion, Mr. Matson. I'm wondering why... why this man... Took so much trouble to, to get this girl. It's plain as the nose on your face, ain't it? A man doesn't have to attempt murder to get a girl, Roy. Now, why are we jawing about that? Who cares why he wants her? Miss Barkley, earlier today you said that your daughter had a beautiful voice. Would it be too painful to tell us how she lost it? She saw three people tortured and murdered before her eyes. One of them a young girl, her best friend. And the shock was too much for her. And why was she spared? She was in the attic bedroom. And the killer didn't see her. And that's why he's coming here now to kill her, so that she won't identify him. A skunk like that ain't fit to breathe the same air she does. I'd get a real joy killing a man like that. Well, you have your chance, Roy. He's waiting right out there on that ridge. I'm betting, Mrs. Barkley, that he's the one that's hounding us. You betting against it? Does it matter? No, it don't. I've been rooting in the rocks and the mud for 20 years. The last to get me a chance to come up for air, I ain't gonna let nothing stop me. He's only one man. Pretty good man. He's got our food, our water. You're four to one. You got a blood feud with the killer. That's your business. My business is to get to Stockton. We'll get to Stockton, Lassiter. Maybe. 
Maybe too late for me. Maybe she won't be waiting for me. Maybe she'll think I'm not coming. She knows you love her. She'll wait. She don't know nothing about me except what I wrote in my letters. Mail order bride? Something wrong with that? Nothing, nothing. And she will wait for you. If we don't make a deal with that bushwhacker, I'll show up in a box. Oh, no, no, Mr. Lassiter. He's a coward. He'll never come within gun range. He's just trying to scare you off so he can kill a defenseless girl. And please, please don't let him. This is an easy place to defend. I'll take the first shift standing guard. And maybe tomorrow morning the horses will be rested and we can make Stockton by tomorrow night. Hold on, soldier boy. You might be needing this. Four to one, Lassiter. Looks like you lose. Ma'am, this time you keep your water ration. Careful, Mr. Manson. You'll be accused of being gallant. Not guilty. I only have one interest in your well-being, ma'am. We just can't afford to lose a good cook. Sure, I know you're worried. But there's no sense acting like the world's coming to an end just because the stage is a little late. A little late? It's ten minutes past five. Maybe we better ride out of ways, Nick. Look, can't you wait just a little while longer? Maybe they threw a wheel or busted an axle. Well, now, it'd only take a few minutes to fix a broken wheel, an hour at most for a broken axle. Come on, Nick, we waited too long already. Right. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Sure, I know what must have happened. The bridge over Pride's Gulch went out, and if it ain't been fixed, that means the stage has got to go by way of Greenfield. That'd bring it here in the morning. The morning? Oh, we don't charge any for the extra ride. They would have telegraphed, wouldn't they? Well, they can't do that. The wire ain't been strung through Greenfield yet. Well, we may as well go back to the ranch. Well, I'm sorry, boys. I'll tell them you were here. Yeah. Made a move. How do you know? That campfire could be just for show. He could be crawling down that hill at us right now. You think so? I don't know the man. I don't know what's on his mind. If you want me to stay out here with you, I will. No. One of us is enough, I guess. You sure? Yep. I said so, didn't I? There's one good thing. She doesn't know what's happening. I apologize for that, Mrs. Barkley. That's all right, Roy. Pretty lady. Here. Take it. Red Jack goes on the Black Queen.
stole my shotgun. And a horse. All on account of... of her! She ain't worth nothing! She ought to be put away! Now stop it! Stop it, both of you! Did you hear what he said? It doesn't matter now. He took the water. Whoever he is up there, he sure knows how to drive the pikers out of the game. These horses don't get water soon. They ain't gonna last. Neither are we, Barney. Well, the Watson Ranch has a line cabin up in the hills. Maybe 20 miles off the trail. They got food stashed away there. Maybe they got water, too. Water? But you're not sure? No, I ain't sure they got water. And I ain't sure two horses in their condition can pull a full stage for 20 miles. Mister, I ain't sure of nothing. Morning, ma'am. I don't suppose he's gone yet. I doubt it. Barney says there may be some water at a cabin up in the hills. Meanwhile, um, why don't you put this in your mouth? Relieve the thirst. The heritage my father left me. Didn't your mother tell you to wash it off first? Oh, my mother. My mother wasn't around long enough to tell me anything. When my father lost his job at the woolen mills at Hartford, why, my mother couldn't stand the strain, so she ran off with a more affluent drummer. I was ten years old at the time. And so, at ten years old, your opinion of women was born, hmm? And at twenty years old when I got married for the first time, and at thirty years old when I got married for the second time. And did they run off with affluent drummers, too? Well, frankly, ma'am, I just wiped it out of my mind uh, why my marriages were such a disaster, but... Don't get me wrong, I don't blame any of them for their lack of character. It's a woman's nature. Well, maybe it was your lack of good judgment. Maybe. Roy, where's Audra? Well, I don't know. Well, I thought she was with you. No. Check the shack in the back. I'll check the stables. Audra. Audra! case, we better get back to the stage. Come on. You all right, Mrs. Barkley? Yes, I'm all right. Thank you. Audra's all right, too, Roy. Sure, sure. We're all all right. Now, let's get moving. Don't discourage easy.
He got us beat. But how did he get here before us? Doesn't matter how. He just did. There ain't a drop of water between here and Stockton. Well, we can survive longer than that without water. Look. Lady, I'm checking out. Oh, no. Will $5,000 get you to stay? Lady, where does a dead man spend $5,000? Don't unhitch that horse. That horse is company property. I just bought it. And Mr. Matson has a gun to see that the deal sticks. Well, if Mr. Matson has the brains of a goose egg, he'll check out with me. Each of you gets $5,000 the minute my daughter and I set foot in Stockton. Oh, I don't need pay for the privilege of escorting you and your daughter to Stockton, Mrs. Barkley. The purpose of the young to make the old seem greedy and corrupt. I accept your offer, Mrs. Barkley. We can't force you to stay. Now, that's a prime choice, ma'am. Go on foot without water and die alone, or stay here and die with some company. Ain't nobody gonna hurt you. I'll see to that. All right, Barney, let's get out of here. Ha! Could be. Sure, any of us go for that water bag, he's got a clear shot. We've got to have water. Anybody volunteer? He might not shoot at a woman. He might not. He's not gonna let that water bag get back to this stage. And being a woman ain't gonna stand in his way. One man less would suit him just fine. Well, you can quit your arguing. We've got our volunteer. driving. I figure we got no choice. You're right. Horses have to pull this stage a couple of miles more, they'll drop. Now, when I ride out of here, you get up in those rocks. One man with a gun up there could hold off an army.
If he's gonna chase me, he's gotta come right by here, so you'll have an easy shot. You're the prettiest thing I've ever seen in my whole life. I'll be back with help. Come. He's not following him. I guess he figures there's just one less man. Let's get up on those rocks. So there was a second one after all. You mean that you knew there were two of them? At the High Ridge, they told me there was two, but since we only saw one, I thought only one followed us. And you held back, Mrs. Yes, Barclay? Yes, I held back. I'd lie. I would do anything to save my daughter. One horse left, mister. You can ride out peaceful. You ride out now. Oh, no, no, you can't. You're not that kind of a man. Lassiter and Barney can ride off to save their own skins, but not you. It would stay with you for the rest of your life. I never go against a stack deck, ma'am. If there was a chance, But I'd you're stay. not an animal. You can't ride away and leave us. We're all animals, Mrs. Barkley. We're all kin to the beasts of the field. The only difference is man knows he's going to die, and sometimes he gets a chance to die a little later than sooner. And I intend to die later. Then leave me your gun. I can't do that, man. Those men may change their mind about letting me go peaceful. I wish there was something I could do. You can leave me your gun. I've got to have a gun. Bye, ma'am. Ardra, come with me. Ardra, come with me. Those men, those men, they want to kill you. Don't you understand? They want to kill you. Now come with me.
Richard, take my hand. Come on. young boy I told you about, Roy Sanders. I owe him $5,000. I'd, I'd like to send it to his family. Audra, this is Mr. Henry Matson, My daughter, Mr. Matson. How do you do, Mr. Matson? The pleasure is all mine, ma'am. You do have a beautiful voice. You caught the stage at Ravenwood, ma'am, huh? We did. Goodbye. Uh, Miss Barkley. I am, um, I'm glad you made it. And as you predicted, I, I'm finding it difficult to live with myself if that gives you any satisfaction. It gives me no satisfaction, Mr. Matson. the rest of the way. Why not all the way to Plankton to pick up that stallion we don't need? What are you talking about? We need that stallion for breeding. We don't need it. All we need is me out of town until Rance Kendall has a chance to cool down. Heath, is it such a bad idea? Consider the alternative. I just don't like carrying on this game of making believe nothing's happened. All right, something did happen. It was tragic, but it wasn't your fault. He was drunk and he didn't know what he was doing. Drunk or sober, he drew on you first. Now, what else could you do? That's true, Heath, and... Kendall will see that if you just give him a little time. A couple of weeks thought, and he'll realize another gunfight isn't going to bring his kid back. Especially when he hasn't got a chance of winning, and you know it. I didn't. Maybe I wouldn't be going. See you. Don't worry. I'll see that he gets out of town. Well, I... I got to get that corral ready for the stallion. Are we pretending to each other? Do you really think Kendall will change his mind? I don't know, Audra. He can be an evil man and a stupid one. I just don't know. <laughs> It's roundup time, Mr. Kendall. New hands are hard to come by. But we'll find somebody to, to take his it. place. I don't think so. Yeah. 
Morning, Rance. He was a boy. Just a boy. With a gun. Mr. Kendall, I know how you must feel about losing your son. I can't tell you how sorry I am. Don't try. You don't need it, and I don't want it. All I want is you dead now, like my boy is. And you will be. You can take my word on that. I won't fight you. They'd roll in saddlebags. Running off won't save you. I'll be back. Don't worry. You can go as far as you like, and you can come back when you like, because you're as good as dead now. I promised him that. And that's one promise I'm going to keep. Rance, this kind of talk isn't going to do anybody. Keep out of it. I'm talking to him. Like I said, Mr. Kendall, I'm sorry. I can't say any more than that. Mr. Kendall, I worked for you a long time. And I ain't one to give advice. Forget it, Bates. I can't. I've got to say it. Call Heath Barkley out, you're a dead man. Your son was fast, real fast, but not like him. You wouldn't stand a chance. I got no notion to call him out. I just want him dead. How? In a fight. Fair fight, just as fair as my son had, but not with me. Vern Hickson. Ever heard of him? Hickson? You want to tell me again how fast Heath Barkley is? Not that fast. Not against Hickson. You sent for him? I've sent for him. shouldn't have let him go like that. Nothing else I can do. He killed our pa. Your pa drew first. Pa had no choice. He made him. Now, he was hired to kill him. You know that the same as you we listen did. listen to me, boys. Your pa had some enemies, people who wanted his land. That doesn't mean they went out and hired Vern Hickson to kill him. Hickson's a hired gun. Why else would he do it? I don't know. All I know is you got no proof. Without proof, there's nothing I can do. I'm sorry. Nothing. Maybe there's something we can do. Smell that water, do you, boy? Huh? Hey, let's go get something. Sorry, friend. Thought you were someone else. Whoever you're expecting. Can't be too friendly. Well, can't say I was expecting anyone, but a man can't be too careful. You were that. I enjoy living. These are rough parts. I heard there were some desperados around in the area. Which way are you heading? 
North. Well, so am I. Well, maybe I'll see you again. Better watch out for those desperados. I will. I saw them before in my life. Must have been those desperados I was telling you about. They don't look, look more like kids, like farmers. Never judge a man by his appearance. It can be dangerous. Like you, for instance. Much obliged, but who are you? My name's Heath Barkley. 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 Yours? Hickson. Vern Hickson. You heard of me, huh? I've heard of you. You said you were heading north. Whereabouts? Well, that's my business, isn't it, friend? This wound needs tendon. Then tend it. Don't leave. You heard right, friend. It's the way it is with me. I don't ask favors and I don't give any. You ask my name and you don't like it. That's your privilege. Stay or leave. That's your privilege, too. Leave now, you'll bleed to death. <laughs> Slug's got to come out. So? You bite on this, you're going to need it. Hey, I like your style, friend. Open. I made out of dried jerky. I feel like I'm on fire. It's fever. How long have I been out? About six hours. I don't think I'm gonna make it. You'll make it. Drink some more.
baby. It, it don't matter who. A thousand. Thousand dollars. Please. Baby. Baby. It don't, it don't matter who. Baby. 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 It don't, it, it don't matter who. Baby. Baby. Please. about that arm. Yeah. You know, you could have gotten yourself killed sticking your neck out for me. I keep wondering why. I have to explain it. It wouldn't make any difference. You don't like me much, do you? Not much. Why not? You're a hired killer. That's right. But a lot of people are killers one way or another. My way is more direct, that's all. Dog eat dog. I found that out, so I eat. A lot better than this as a rule. No reflection on your cooking. Men you've never seen before? Men you got nothing against? My best friend. If I had a best friend, and the price was right. You ever kill a man? I've had to. You know, I've killed... I don't know how many. And I never felt a thing. Not one thing. But you felt something, didn't you? I'm leaving it, son up. I couldn't sleep. Yeah, I know. I, I couldn't either. So many reasons why he could be late. Oh, sure there are. You know, Jared, I was thinking about Kendall's son a few moments ago. And if it hadn't been Heath, it probably would have been somebody else. He, he was that kind. He just had to have it all. Rance ruined that boy, Mother. He gave him everything. Everything except what he really needed, I guess. Well, it's easy to say yes. And it's difficult to say no, even when you know better. And Kendall didn't. You know, Jared, I think there's a breeze coming up. It might be a little cooler tomorrow. I hope so. Nick and I are going out to look for him tomorrow. And don't you worry. We'll find him. Thank you, Jared. Good night, Mother. Good night. We'll take the trail to Willow Cut Point. We'll probably camp the night at Stone Mason. Now, if uh, Heath comes in by a different route, you uh, send one of the other men out for us, will you? All right. We'll probably find him walking some lame horse somewhere. Or trying to ride that wild stallion. Will you get that horse saddled out? Heath! You better later. Got to get him into the house. He's lost a lot of blood. Can I make it all right, mister? I made it this far. I'll make it. Vern Hickson. Yeah? Last I heard, he'd killed 16 men. 
I want him out of here right now. Oh, Let somebody else take care of him. Who? I don't know, but get him out from under this roof. He's not to be moved, not until he's well. All right. Well, Doc said he'd be okay in a few days. Well, he better be right. I want him out of here as soon as he can stand. We all do, Nick. Y'all, excuse me, I think I'll take a hot bath. I think we're very lucky. Lucky? Heath is home. And he's safe. Your sister. How are you feeling? Yeah, I remember you. And they brought me in. How long ago? About eight hours. Are you hungry? I didn't know how much. Oh. Here, let me help you. Comfortable? Yeah. As much as can be expected. How about you? What do you mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. Your brother must have told you about me. Does it bother you? It bothers me. Hmm. A man's got to go on living. A lot of people I meet, though. You make it sound very matter-of-fact. Yeah, that's what it is, a matter-of-fact. Want to know another one? You're about the prettiest woman I've ever seen. It doesn't seem to please you. It doesn't. That's all profit and loss in this world. It's kill or be killed. People you don't even know. Wouldn't matter much if I did know them. As long as I get paid. And I get paid pretty good. What people say about you. They're right. Yeah, people don't seem to like me very much. But I'll bet you could. What I'd like is to have you out of this house as soon as possible. With you around here, not much of a hurry. out of bed. I'm feeling better. It's a lot better. Something I want to say to you. What's that? Sorry about the things I said last night. I had no call to do that. Lately, I've been having trouble with the people I've met, especially women. I'm afraid I've forgotten how to act around a lady. Please forget it. All right, I'll forget it. Everything except. One thing I said to you. You are the... prettiest woman I've ever seen. Still doesn't please you. Sorry. I'm sorry, too. For you. 
Don't be. I don't want that. Not from you. I'm sorry, because after you leave here, you'll go on as you are. As I am. What else is there? It has to be explained. No, don't bother. As your brother said, it wouldn't make any difference. Right? What I want, I take. My way. Let me help you. Hello. Made it down alone. Make it up the same way. And if it's any comfort to you, I'll soon be out of your house. The eyes. When a man's going to draw a you can always tell by his eyes. Hey. Come on, try it. Are well, your gears packed? You're ready to go? Why the games? What's the matter? Well, it matters to me. The man I know is going to pay me a lot of money to do a simple job. With this arm, I want to make sure I haven't lost my touch. Whoever he is, I hope you have. I'll get your gear. Hey. I guess I haven't. Well, I'm all set. You know, I kind of hate to leave. I really do. Where's Audra? In the house. We'll say goodbye for you. You do that. Don't expect we'll meet again. Sure I can't send you some money? Hate owing. You owe us nothing. Just as you like. But I'm beholden, real beholden. What we did for you, we would have done for anybody. If you did it for me, I'm sure you would. Well, so long, Heath. I guess I ought to thank you again. I don't know if I'd have done the same thing for you. Oh, that man I've got to see. You tell me where I can find him. His name is Rance Kendall. You'll find him. I'm sure I will. Heath Barkley. You know him? Saved my life. Saved your life? When? Doesn't matter when or how. A person saves your life, man ought to be grateful. You saying you're backing out of it? You know, his family helped a lot, too. thousand dollars here. Count it. I don't have to count it. Nobody ever cheated me. I can say the same thing, Hickson. Meaning? Meaning Barkley killed my son. He's gonna die for it. I hired you to do the job. You agreed to do it. You back out now. I'd say I was being cheated. Don't threaten me, Kendall. I don't take kindly to that. I hired you for the job. Just taking a little time to think it over. Don't take too long. The job will be done. Leave the money. If I spend it, Heath Barkley will be dead. Where do you think you're going? Well, he's had time to find Rance. Decide what he's going to do. Oh, I see. He's just going to ride into town, make it easy for him, huh? You think saving that man's life's going to make any difference to him? I know it won't. Then why? He's a gunfighter. He won't draw unless I do. 
I don't intend to. I just want to tell him that. Oh. All right, well, you take it easy here. Thanks, Nick. Like I say, I'm but older. Did you see him? Candle? Yeah, I saw him. How long have you known? They found out my name. He brought me in. When? Would it matter? No. I don't ask favors. I don't give any. I told you that. You set the time and place. I'm not drawn against you. Yeah. Let's say, uh, the street tomorrow at 10. I won't be there. Uh, Heath. Huh? Uh, not your way. Mine. Deserve this? Not like this. Tomorrow at ten. Sooner or later, that's how it is. You've got no choice. Audrey I said it would be all right. I just don't see any reason for you to go into town. Well, there's lots of reasons. You just told me how important it was that you have that fitting at the dressmakers. That was before I knew Nick was gone. I can go in myself. Not while there's an able-bodied male Barkley here. Heath, be serious. You know you shouldn't go into town with Vern Hicks in there. Audra, I am serious. Now, what am I supposed to do? Dig a hole and hide in it? No, but... Well, no buts now. Up you go. Besides, I'm not wearing a gun, and even Vern Hickson wouldn't force a fight with a man that's unarmed. Here you go. I've got some errands to do. I'll pick you up here. All right. I want to talk to you. It's my pleasure. I want to talk about Heath. Well, your brother really disappoints me. Sending his sister over to plead for him? Heath didn't send me and I... What? And I am pleading. No, you're not pleading. You're wasting your time. The other day when you came downstairs, you... You were different. No, I only thought that. I did too for a while. It's no good. You're talking about my brother's life. 
No. Talking about a job, just like all the others. An animal. I'm a, I'm a businessman. It's cold thing, business. I didn't make the rules. No, I didn't make the rules. Nobody did. Because there aren't any. Not even for you, the prettiest woman. Lady. I've ever seen. I'm sorry. what happened now tell me the truth Barkley you're looking at the truth you know she came in my room to beg for you but she's so pretty I guess I got carried away he no got a no get I'll kill you tomorrow at 10 you want more of what you've been getting he, that's just what he wants. That's right. And I always get what I want. You know, town I came from, there was a farmer a lot like you. He wouldn't fight either. But in the end, he did. Oh. You met his sons. After they were dead. Those desperados, remember? Those boys' father, a simple farmer. You drew on him? Uh-uh. He drew on me. Like you will. Yeah. Just like you will. Why? There's no other way. I've got to meet him. Keith, please, I've told you. It wasn't me. He was just using me to Nothing get to you. Nothing happened. Nothing worth dying for. It's not just Audra. I tried to turn my back on it. I, I can't anymore. I'm meeting him tomorrow morning. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. He? Oh, never mind, Audra. It wouldn't do any good. It's my fault if I hadn't gone there. It wouldn't have happened. Oh, you were just trying to help. We all are. Funny thing is, we've been going about it in the wrong way. Audrey, hitch up the buggy. Why? Never mind. I have to go to town. Just hitch up the buggy. Yeah. May I come in? Oh, please do, Mrs. Barkley. What can I do for you? I've come to ask you not to murder my son. Murder? It'll be a fair fight. In fact, he'll draw first. He saved your life. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Uh-huh. It means he saved my life. 
I don't understand. I, I just don't understand how a man like you can live with himself. I've got a job, just like everybody. I'm in business, like a banker. Bankers don't kill people. Oh, don't they? Well, he wasn't much of a man. Let people walk all over him, took it. He always said he tried to do what he called the decent thing. Had a farm. It wasn't worth much, just a dried up piece of land. It was his. He put his sweat into it and his dreams. One year his crops failed and the man came around. He said, that farm's not yours anymore. The bank was foreclosing. So the next day, a kid of 12, on his birthday, climbed a raft in the barn, cut a rope, and watched his father fall like a sack of grain at his mother's feet. That man, always tried to do the decent thing. That was my father. Bankers don't kill people. Everybody. Everybody kills. And for the same reason. Money. My way is more honest. That's all. I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry. He deserved what he got. Everybody does. And that's why it's important to get the other man first. I've lived by that. I reckon someday, a long time from now, I'll die by it. You died a long time ago. And it's you I'm sorry for. Save your sorrow. You'll be needing it, and I'm sorry for that. But, like the banker said to my father, business is business. All right. All right, then let's talk business. How much is Rance Kendall paying you to kill Heath? Hmm? How much is anybody paying you to kill Heath? <laughs> Why? $5,000. $5,000 if you ride out of Stockton before 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. $5,000? That's a lot of money. That's truly a lot of money. And you'll do it. Add another thousand. You got a deal. The bank. The bank opens at uh, 9 o'clock. I think I'll be their first customer. Why are you smiling? <laughs> it's funny. That banker... He only made a few hundred for killing my father. And I walk into that bank tomorrow morning... I make six thousand dollars for not killing a man. I call that profit. No. No, not profit. Money, perhaps, but not profit. Compassion, kindness, that's where you find profit. But the dead can't know that. Only the living. And I can't communicate with the dead. I can only feel for them and pity them. For $6,000, Mrs. Barkley, you feel what you like. You can't do 
this to me. I paid you. But not enough. I've had a better offer. Besides, I haven't liked this job since I found out who it was. Well, you took my money quick enough. That's right. I took it. You paid me. And I'd have done the job if I had to. But, but a man saves your life. Oh, don't try that on me. If they hadn't bought you off, you'd have killed him without giving it a second thought. <laughs> I might have tried to. But that split second before firing. I might have remembered. Remembered what? Remember that he patched you up and brought you in? Yeah. Something like that. Anyhow, there's no profit in it now. There's more than one kind of profit. <laughs> so I've been told. You could end up losing everything. You threatening me? I'm telling you. <laughs> Any time. <laughs> Did you do it? What did you say? Oh, I just... Morning, had... everybody. Good morning, morning Jared. Morning, Jared, Mother. We're trying to find out how Mother did it. Well, that's very simple. She's a magician. Where's Heath? He's still asleep. Probably the best night's sleep he's got in the... Well, good morning, Heath. Good morning, Mr. Heath. Good morning. Got a mighty fine breakfast today. I bet you got a mighty fine appetite to match it. <laughs> Mother, last night you said you talked Vern into changing his mind. I'd like to know how you did that. What well, does it matter? He has. How much did you have to pay him? Well, I never said I... You didn't have to. I know him. How much? All right, Heath. All right. Six. Six thousand dollars and worth every cent to get him to ride out of town. And after he rides out, who's next? Whether if it's wrong for Vern to kill for money, it's just as wrong for me to stay alive because we got the money to buy him off. Now, he's got to be stopped. I don't know if I can. But I've got to try. I'm sorry, Mother. I've got to face him. I'll be back. Wait a minute, Heath. I'll saddle the horses. No. I think I've got that right. And I'm asking you to respect it. But thanks. All of you. Didn't your mother tell you? She paid me off. You're worth more to me now as you are. Now, to tell you the truth, I'm kind of glad I didn't have to kill you. But you'd have done it if she hadn't paid you off. Yeah, I'd have done it. In a fair fight, of course. How many fair fights have you had, Vern? I don't count. But there'll be more. Yeah, I reckon. Get out. You're out of your mind. I've been paid. There's no profit. I said get out. No chance, Heath. I'm sure I could take you. 99% sure. But that 1% gamble without a cent to win. Those are odds I don't like to mess with. Like I say, there's no profit. Well, so long, friend. Consider yourself lucky.
$6,000. More money than I ever had. I'll never spend it. Sorry, Vern. I thought you were drawing on me. Son, rifle. He had me cold. No, Vern. He had me cold. Thrown you a dozen times. Well, he can throw me a dozen more times. I'm gonna to get to him. All right, all right. Break your neck. Nick, what happened to you? That ornery. Well, that's what happened. But you know you're not going to ride that stallion. Why do you try? That's what I've been trying to tell him. Well, I've got to ride him. What else is he good for? Well, like I heard, we needed this particular very fine stallion to improve our breed. Just couldn't get along without him. That's what you said, Nick. Yeah, it looks like now we got a stallion nobody can ride and not even fit for breeding. Looks like a waste of money. <laughs> That's right. You all have a good laugh. But if it hadn't been for that stallion, I mean, suppose, just suppose, that Hickson didn't meet Heath here on the trail, that Hickson went into town, saw Rance, and then called Heath out. He has a point, Audra. You bet I have. That plug may not be good for anything but the glue pot, but we still made a profit. Heath, come on. Help me catch that ornery piece of horse flesh. I'm gonna give him another ride. Or vice versa. Oh, way past sunup and you're still lounging around. What are you waiting on? I'm waiting on you to climb out of bed. Out a little late last night, weren't you, Nick? Yeah, a little. What's this we have here? The bandits massacred or the citizens strike back. Another thrilling true life story by Ted Haggard. Now, where did you get this? Dave Carr. Interesting book. You ought to read it. I already have. So have I. You, Audra. When did you start reading dime novels? Well, I borrowed it from Edith, but it really belongs to her brother. What's it about? Well, it's supposed to be the true story of the Devlin gang and what happened to them two years ago in Kansas. As I recall, they robbed a bank and were all gunned down, weren't they? Except for the girl. What girl? Oh, that's the girl that uh, Halyard invented for this true life story. Well, see, there was this skinny red-headed kid that was waiting outside with the horses, and he got away because he outrode the posse. Well, now, Halyard says that this skinny red-headed kid actually was Devlin's woman dressed in pants, and he also claims that she's hiding out somewhere right here in California. Waiting for the chance to sneak back and dig up Ike Devlin's buried treasure. It is exciting, isn't it? Oh, almost as exciting as those stories you used to write about that great Western hero and cavalry scout, the Comanche Kid. You remember the real Comanche Kid, don't you? Mm -hmm. Very well. He was the biggest liar in the territory, and all his scouting was done in saloons. Hallyard has a very vivid imagination. And we have an awful lot of work to do, and I haven't got time to wait all day for you. Come on. Morning, Dave. Morning, Audra. Morning, Nick. Morning, Audra. Well, thanks for the book. Hey. Pretty interesting, huh? Got it all in one night. Oh, by the way, where's Jody? Well, he should be along about now. Oh? I can't say as I've seen him since sundown yesterday. Where'd he go? Snipe hunting. <laughs> Snipe hunting? Oh, come on, Dave. Even old Jody wouldn't fall for an old stunt like that. I don't know. Look at that. I got another one we could play on him. Oh? This thing about Ike Devlin's woman hiding out around here. What about it? I'll bet you we could name most any girl in town, and Jody believes that she's the one. <laughs> oh, no, I don't think so. Well, I got a silver dollar that says that we could even say it was Jenny Hall, and he'd believe she's the one. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny? Jenny Hall? You, you mean the dressmaker? Well, she's a redhead. <laughs> Just like in the story. <laughs> you got yourself a bet. Oh. How'd you do? I almost caught me a pass of them little devils. Oh, yeah? But, but they got away. Oh. 
Well, I told you they were shifty. Oh, they are. But I'll catch them next time there's a full moon. I bet you will. Well, now I think you better hitch up the wagon and go into town for some supplies. Hey, Pretty hold good. on. Aren't you going to warn him about Miss Jenny Hall first? Oh, that's right. Uh, Jody, uh, I'm going to let you in on a big, deep secret. I want you to keep it quiet, here. Mr. Edwards, I want to congratulate you on winning that calf roping contest. Oh, yeah? Thank you. You were really outstanding. I said to myself, I must tell him. Excuse me. Laverne? what you've got in mind, but I have a feeling there ought to be. Nonsense. I've invited a few nice people to our house for dinner and an auction, that's all. Nice people? Don't you mean rich people who are going to be just a little bit poorer before they escape your dainty little clutches? They're making it sound like armed robbery. They'll have a good time and they'll be helping a lot of orphans. What's the matter with that? Absolutely nothing. So what next, slave driver? Go get another case? Please. Well, just in time. What is all this junk? Never mind. Follow me. Junk? These are antiques for our auction. We're having an auction. During the party. Well, I didn't even know we're having a party. That's because you never listened to me. We're raising money for the orphanage. You can put me down for fifty dollars. You're good for a hundred and fifty. What was that? I said you're good for a hundred and fifty dollars at least. Audrey, you're absolutely right. I never listen. Mother. Oh, well, mother, I am starving. I want to start off with a side of beef. Two gallons of coffee, and I'm going to settle down to some serious eating. You were not expected for lunch. Change my mind. He's still in town? 
He's back, as a matter of fact, he's out looking for you. Oh? What about? Well, he brought back some disturbing news, and for some strange reason, he thought you would be interested in hearing it, too. Uh, Do you know Miss Jenny Hall? Uh, no, no, no. The no. new dressmaker, I'm sure you've Oh, Jenny Hall, yeah. yeah. Well, he says it's a ridiculous story all over town. Remember Halyard's book, the one we were talking about a few mornings ago at Devil Breckman? Gang. Uh-huh. Well, some fool started a story about Jenny. They say she's the missing bandit. There's a couple of things that uh, I've got to get done. Uh, got, what about uh, your lunch? I'm not very hungry. Uh, I'll see you later. Oh! the white and two of the blue. Oh, and that uh, piece of lavender brocade I looked at the other day. And a roll of that pale blue ribbon. How much will that be? I'll, uh, I'll charge it to your account. Um, Mr. Simmons, I don't have an account with you. Well, you, uh, you have one now. What in the world is going on? Has this entire town lost its mind? Uh, Miss Hall, I think maybe I can explain. If we could go somewhere and talk in private. In private? Uh, my name is Nick Barkley, and, well, I just... I know who you are, Mr. Barkley. I didn't think you know who I am, though. Oh, I do, I do, and I, I like uh, very much to... Well, my shop is at the end of the street. We can go there. Fine, fine. Yeah, but, but, but Mr. Simmons... I'll charge it, Miss Hall. I'll charge it. so funny. You are, Barkley. You figured on sniffing after from here to Kansas? Uh, hold this. I'll be back in a minute. Take your best shot. I didn't catch the name of the gentleman who just left. That was Mr. Nick Barkley. Formidable fellow. And the lady he's escorting is... Uh, Miss Jenny Hall. Better and better. Now, well, gentlemen, your next drink will be purchased by our country's most successful author and utterly fearless newspaper correspondent. You, sir? Ted Halyard, Esquire. The drinks are on Mr. Halyard. Go to the bar. The drinks are on Mr. Halyard. you wouldn't like a cup of tea. What? Oh, oh, oh no, no. Uh, thank you very much. Won't you sit down, Mr. Barkley? Ah, this gown is for your sister, Audra. Pretty, isn't it? Yes, very pretty. I believe she's having a dinner party next week. Some other ladies have ordered dresses just for it.
What are you having so much trouble saying, Mr. Barclay? Look, uh... It's all my fault, do you understand? No, I can't really say that I do. Won't you sit down, Mr. Barclay? I mean, this whole thing, this, this whole thing that's going on in town, the, 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 the people staring at you and the, everything. Well, it's my fault. It is? Yes. Did you, did you ever read the Halyard story about, the, about that missing bandit and how, uh, he, uh, how he says it was a woman? The Devlin gang. Right, right. Well, this whole town seems to think it's you. I see. And why should they think that, Mr. Barkley? Because Jody's got a big mouth, that's why. Jody? Yeah, Jody. Yeah, he's a... He's a hand. He, he works for me. Well, he's a little bit short of brains, I tell you. I mean, you can tell him anything, he'll believe it. I mean, if, if, you, were to, if you were to tell him that... Well, no matter what you tell him, he'd still believe it. Anyway, uh, I thought I'd... Try to prove that, well, Jody isn't as stupid as everybody thinks. No. I mean, there, but there were some things that even Jody wouldn't believe. So I told him that... I told him that you were the missing member of the Devlin gang. But why me, Mr. Barkley? Because you're the least likely woman I could think of. And because I'm just about as short of brains as, as Jody is, that's why. <laughs> well, now, I figured you'd come at me with those scissors there. These are just pinking shears. <laughs> they just keep you from coming unraveled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you managed to brighten my very dull life, Mr. Barkley. I can't remember the last time I laughed as much. Would you call me Nick? I'd appreciate it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Nick. With all this, will you tell me why I haven't had a visit from the sheriff? Well, I guess that it's... Uh, he's got twice the sense I have. Oh, but I'll, uh... I'll go right over to his office and straighten all this out as soon as I leave here. And Miss Hall. Oh, just Jenny will be fine. Thank you. Thank you. Jenny. Are any of these, uh... Fancy dresses around here, yours? Mine? Oh, no. <laughs> Why not? Oh, where would I wear them? To a party. My oh. sister Audra's throwing a party at our house. Oh, Mr. Barclay. Nick. You don't have to do penance for your sins. I absolve you. Turning me down, right? Yes. <laughs> there must be dozens of suitable ladies for you to invite. Can't think of a one. Pick you up seven o'clock Friday night. Oh, but I... seven o'clock Friday night. You be ready. Here, bye bye. <laughs> Mr. Barclay. Yeah. Allow me to introduce myself. Ted Talia, the writer. The same. Didn't know you were in Stockton. Mr. Barkley, while I was up in Sacramento, I heard a very interesting rumor. Oh? Which I felt deserved my personal attention. I see. Uh, how well do you know Miss Hall? Oh, no, now, wait a minute. You're not thinking of doing a story about her, are you? Oh, well, now, she's the one that rode with the Devlin gang. She never rode with Still, them. Mr. Barkley, if she is the one, I feel that I owe it to my public. Mr. Halyard, she never rode with the Devlin gang. Let's get that straight. How can you be so sure? I'm sure. I see. You've appointed yourself the girl's protector. That's right. Praiseworthy. Let me spell it out for you, Mr. Halyard. You stay away from Miss Hall. She never rode with the Devlin gang. It was all a very bad joke. 
I see. Well, it would make a very interesting uh, follow-up story. Properly handled, of course. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Oh. I might incur your displeasure. You might. <laughs> well, in that case, Mr. Barclay, having been a witness to the last time your displeasure was incurred, I shall, of course, abandon the entire project. Permanently. Oh, I swear it, Mr. Barclay. On the grave of my sainted mother. Listen, I didn't know you knew Ted Halyard. We've met. That's all? Sounded more to me like you were old pals. How do you mean? You sure didn't leave me much of a shot. What about Halyard? Oh, nothing. Only I was introduced to him in town today. And he insisted that I bring you a message about his mother. His mother? Yeah. He wanted me to tell you that his mother is the oldest living female pharaoh dealer in Boulder City, Colorado. Now, what, uh... What else did he say? Oh, nothing. Only he suggested that I read his story in the Morning Eagle. I got it right over there. What's it say? Nick, old boy, I think you're going to have time to read it yourself. Tell me about it, will you? Well, he suggests, uh, without actually naming names, that he knows the identity of the missing member of the Devlin gang. Now, as far as I'm concerned, it's just another classic example of yellow journalism. At its lowest, I might add. Or gossip being dignified in print. Respectable young lady being pilloried by innuendo. Jared, you're not talking to a jury. It's me, Nick. Well, I wish I were talking to a jury. I have a feeling that our little dressmaker friend is in a lot of trouble. Well, if she is, so is Halia. Huh? Now. tells you that you're an expert liar. Don't believe him. All right.
lovely young lady. Oh, if only I were 60 again. Why, Senator, <laughs> you're the youngest man I know. And how much will that nice compliment cost me? Not, mind you, that it won't be worth every penny of it. Those words came straight from my heart. <laughs> and you'll find the blank checks over there on the table. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, thank you, Miss Audra. But, uh, what for? I hear that your mines are producing more silver than any other mines in the West. They're a very efficiently run operation. So giving up a day's profits just one day wouldn't hurt too much, would it? I beg your pardon? Well, I was thinking of how much the orphanage could do with that money. Well, it's a very worthy cause, but... Uh... Oh, dear Mr. Patton, thank you. I knew we could count on your generosity. The blank checks are over there. Audra, shouldn't you be wearing a mask and carrying a gun? Too obvious. When do you want me to get this little auction started? When I tell you to. Jenny. Oh, Jenny, how nice to see you. Thank you, Mrs. Bach. Come and meet some of our friends. Jenny Hall, how come? Why not? Jenny, may I present Senator Roberts and Mr. Frank Patton, Miss Jenny Hall. How do you do? Our pleasure. Are you Miss Hall, the young lady who recently came to the... Our dressmaker. She made the beautiful gown your wife is wearing tonight. Oh, Nick. Excuse me. And Jenny. Thank you. I have a uh, feeling we've met before. Really? A few years ago. Were you a banker in Kansas? No. Then it couldn't have been when I was riding with the Devlin gang. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Hall, I certainly didn't mean to imply anything. Of course you didn't. Seeing you here tonight is enough to make anyone realize what a ridiculous story that was. Halyard is a scoundrel. And a poorly informed one, for example, he never mentions the fact that the missing bandit appeared to be left-handed. Was he? How do you know that? I've been doing quite a bit of reading on the subject recently. Uh, that's understandable. Mm -hmm. I, as you may have noticed, am not left-handed. <laughs> well, I never noticed that. Oh, well, perhaps that's because I'm ambidextrous. <laughs> I do things equally well with either hand. <laughs> oh, by George, Miss Hall, you're a cool one. I'm really beginning to believe that you're the bandit after all. <laughs> or that she's trying to make us suspect her of being one. Well, now, I'm sure you wouldn't be interested in just a humdrum dressmaker. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gather around. And bear in mind, as you do, that it's always very pleasant to acquire great pieces of art at a fraction of their original value. It's even more gratifying when you remember that your dollars are going to those who really need them most. Now, what am I offered for this authentic Ming Dynasty vase? off this last item, I want to thank you for your patience and extreme generosity. Which brings us, gentlemen, to this handsome set of dueling pistols. Beautiful. Once the property of President Andrew Jackson. What am I bid? Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. I have fifty dollars. Do I hear seventy-five? Seventy-five? Seventy-five. Do I hear one hundred, gentlemen? One hundred dollars. One hundred. One hundred dollars. A hundred and fifty. Is there a man here generous enough to give us one hundred? That's all. Is something wrong? Miss Hall, your place was ransacked tonight. My deputy surprised whoever did it, and he's dead. No. Oh, no. How awful. <laughs> Come on, sit down. Dorian, 
Miss Hall, I've got to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. No, of course not. She knows nothing about this, Fred. I'm responsible. I told you about it the other day. Now, take it easy, Nick. Have you any idea who could have done this thing? I'm sorry. It looked like the work of more than one man. Uh, do you know what they were after? No. I have nothing of any great value. Miss Hall, why did you come to Stockton? Well, I, I'd heard that the town was growing and that it needed another dressmaker. I see. Miss Hall, where were you in mid-July two years ago? Wait a minute, Fred. You don't have to answer that, Jenny. Oh, I, I don't mind. I, uh, I believe I was in San Francisco. Do you think you could get anybody to back that up? Well, I doubt it. Must I? Oh, Fred, I couldn't tell you where I was two years ago in mid-July. But I certainly wasn't in Kansas robbing banks, and neither was Miss Jenny. I didn't say she was, but one thought occurs to me. I've got a hunch those men tonight would be harder to convince than Nick and me. And they could come back. Well, then, Jenny, will stay with us for a while. Oh, that's kind of you, but uh, I couldn't stay here indefinitely. I I've got work to uh, do. You listen to what she says, young lady. You'll make my job a lot easier. Come along, She'll be all right here. Yeah, she'll get plenty of protection, but... But what? She's never going to be entirely safe until that rumor's killed. The trouble with rumors is that they grow no matter what. Yeah. You gotta keep moving, Link. There's bound to be a posse after us. Link, are you listening? <laughs> I'm trying not to. The deputy's dead. It'd be different if you hadn't killed him. You figure we should have gone along peaceable to the jailhouse? Beats dancing from the end of a rope. I say we ought to move on. Why? Why? Right, why? The only man who got identifies is dead. Sheriff don't know who to look for, let alone where. Yeah, what Link says makes sense. So we're lucky. Let's not push our luck. We gotta get out of here and just keep going till we get to Nevada. And what do we got there? Jobs, maybe. <laughs> Jobs. Breaking our backs for six bits a day. If we find Devlin's pile, we're rich. Devlin's pile could be anywhere. Who knows where it is? Hey, what do you think? The dressmaker. I figure she knows where it is, all right. We didn't find nothing in her shack. Mm hmm Because she's smart. Well, it could be that uh, she don't know nothing about it. Could be that she's just a dressmaker. You saw the gun she had in her? Yeah. Cannon. Could blow a hole in you as big as my fist. It's mighty strange, isn't it? And I know for a fact that Devlin used to leave his loot with his gal friends. It's just the wind. It's got him spooked a little bit. Oh. You can put that gun away. Stop running. Law's gonna be on the lookout for someone on a run. Why don't we go back to Stockton and check into the hotel? You know, that's the first thing that you've said that was halfway smart. <laughs> I was joshing. Well, I'm not. The woman's in Stockton, that's where I want to be. You mean the, the three of us just ride back into town, bold as brass? Mm-hmm. If you got enough nerve. I ride with you, Link. Do you mean?
Figure on shooting somebody? Not before breakfast. You look like quite the expert with that gun. Thanks. But don't tell anyone, will you? I'm in enough trouble. All right. But I might also mention that you look like you were born in those ranch clothes. Audra lent them to me. Well, they look good on you. Oh, I have to go into town to take care of a few things, but I'll be back later this afternoon. Meanwhile, you want anything, you just holler. I'd like to go home, Nick. What's the matter? Aren't we treating you right? Oh, you've been wonderful. All of you. But I've got work to do. It'll keep. You stay put. But I... Talk about it later this afternoon, when I get back. Meantime, have fun. Mr. Barclay, this is indeed a pleasure. I detest eating alone. Would you care to join me? I'd sooner eat with a polecat. <laughs> Mr. Barclay, I did practice a mild deception on you, I admit that. You lied. Well, Mr. Barclay, the freedom of the press, you know. I have an obligation to print the news. To print the truth. Apology you're after. I'd be most happy to print a retraction. I swear it. Yeah, you swear on the grave of your sainted mother. Sheriff, this man has just assaulted me. I demand protection. You better get out of here. I, I beg your pardon? Leave town. I didn't see him assault you, but I may not be around when he tries it again either. Oh. I see. Now, if you'll excuse me. I don't think I'd like to know what you were doing to him, but I figure maybe it was good for his soul. Hey, man, Fred, come on, let's have a beer. Yeah. What? But I would like to talk to you. All right. All right, one beer, huh? Nick, I was just coming out to your place. I've been doing some thinking about Dave Carr. Dave Carr? What about him? Yeah, well, he was the first one who brought Jenny Hall's name into this thing, wasn't he? Well, yeah, yeah. Well, how come? What? How come? Why her? Why not somebody else? Well, well she seemed like the least likely person to be running with an outlaw gang, is all. Well, maybe I can tell you something you don't know. I hear your friend Jenny is a dead shot. Who says so? Luke Jenkins. He saw her practicing. Luke Jenkins? Oh, Fred. He's so drunk most of the time that if he's lucky, he can see the nearest saloon. All right, that could be. But uh, Luke said he saw a woman down by the river firing at a target last week. And uh, Luke says it was Jenny, huh? Well, he didn't get a good look at her. She took off before he could... See her up close, but he did see the target. He said he could cover the holes in it with the palm of his hand. Well, now, that doesn't prove a thing, Fred. Could have just been a woman alone, practicing self-protection, and she got very lucky. Yeah. Yeah, Dave Carr could have brought up her name for no very good reason, but uh, I'd still like to talk to him. Well, he's, he's out with the herd. All right, when he gets back. All right. Looks like he had to. Without a salary? 
It doesn't make much sense, does it? Well, it doesn't. When was the last time anyone saw him? Well, this afternoon before Chow. He was at the back of the herd. First they figured he was out chasing strays, but there weren't any strays. Maybe he got tired of biting the dust back there. Where'd they all chow down? I just the other side of Dry Gulch. Hmm. Feel like taking a ride with me? No, uh, but I will. Well, thank you. about. There's only one way to find out. I know. Go and take a look. So, his horse is gone. Oh, no, it isn't the horse. I got a feeling it's the Devlin's gold. What would Carr know about it? Well, he's the one that brought Jenny's name up, remember? Were well, you trying to say Jenny really had something to do with the Devlin gang? I'm not sure anymore. Heath, you ever heard of a seamstress as a dead shot with a rifle? No. Jenny is. Well, what does that prove? Now, you think about it. We're the ones that said it was ridiculous that she could never be a part of the Devlin gang. But I never heard her say it. I mean, loud and clear. Now, what do we know about her background? About as much as we know about Dave Carr's here, which is absolutely nothing. You, uh, fetch the sheriff, will you, Heath? Where are you going? I'm going to talk to Miss Jenny Hall right now. <laughs> Jenny. She's gone. Gone? Gone where? To town. Well, why didn't you stop her? How could I have stopped her? Besides, I didn't even know she'd left till Silas told me. Pretty much of a dead shot. Seems to me you're a pretty good horsebacker, too. Oh, I see. Oh, you do, huh? <laughs> You've begun to believe your own joke. Is it a joke? Where were you going? To town. Because I'm just a dressmaker, no matter what you think. And I was beginning to feel like a prisoner. All right, Miss Dressmaker. You better hear this. Dave Carr is dead back there. Somebody must have figured he knew something. Couldn't have. There was nothing for him to know. Nothing? Nothing. And it's still my fault. All I had to do was tell the truth. What is the truth? Two years ago, in mid-July, I was at Fort Laramie in Wyoming. 
Well, now, why didn't you tell that to me or the sheriff? I don't know. I've been so unhappy, so ignored. I felt like a stranger everywhere. You changed all that by accident. Suddenly, people paid me attention. And it didn't matter why. I guess I've been using you ever since. Who are you, Jenny? My real name's Hollister. My father was commandant at Laramie. That's where I learned how to ride and shoot. And make dresses? No. I learned that after I ran away. What'd you run away for? There was this sergeant at the post. I was foolish enough to believe that he loved me. It turned out that all he really wanted was the commandant's daughter. My father died and my sergeant all but deserted rather than marry plain Jenny Hollister. Well, I just couldn't face people after that, so I... I left home and came to... Who are they? I don't know. Come on. One of them's riding Dave Carr's horse. What? Yeah, that rock. Uh, Barkley Ranch? That's right. Good. My uh, partners and me, we found this horse. Thought it might belong to you. Stay right where you are. Oh, well, that's not very friendly. I wouldn't try that. You'll never make it. There are three of us, Barkley. Try it, and there'll only be two of you. All we want is the girl. Send her down, and we'll ride on. You're wasting your time. That girl knows nothing. Well, then there's no harm in my talking to her, is there? Now, the next one is going to be right between the eyes. Back off. Back off. Nice and slow. see you running away from anyone or anything. I ran. I've been running ever since. How's it coming? That's the first time I ever shot at a man. And the last time. You could have been killed. Now, come on, get back. I wouldn't want to be alive if they get us.
Jenny, we... Jenny! Goodbye. <laughs> You'll always be welcome in our home and in Stockton. I should say the population of Stockton should double in the next few years. Could make you a very wealthy woman. Oh, thanks. But I belong in Laramie. If I stayed here, I'd still be running away from myself. I'm through with that. I'm not Jenny Hall. And I'm not an outlaw girl. The pretending's over. I'm just Jenny Hollister. Good or bad? Well, that's plenty good enough. Will you write to us, Jenny Hollister? Of course I will, Mrs. Barkley. Let's go. Howdy. I was wondering if I could hitch right into town with you. And... Well, I'll tell you, Jody. I heard tell that uh, Miss Hall here has a gun concealed with that sling of hers. Oh, you're just funning me. <laughs> Get in the back, Jody. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like you got trouble, Reverend. Yeah, I'm afraid so. It sure is embarrassing, too. I was coming back from this wedding I performed, and I bedded down for the night. <laughs> I forgot to tie my horse down hard enough. I tell you, it sure is a hot day for all this walking. You bet. Well, if I can be of any help... Yeah, you sure can. You can hand over the mare you got there right now. Well, I don't see how I can do that without an argument. Well, I'm going to see that you get your horse back. Well, that's real nice of you. First time I ever met a horse thief. Called it alone. Take a look at that. U.S. Deputy Marshal. That's right. With a turned around collar. I'm after a murderer, mister. And I don't aim to let him get me first. Who's the man you're after? Ben Rollins. Rollins? Thought he was in Colorado. That's what everybody thinks, that he's in Colorado. But I got a different line on him. My horse broke a leg about three miles up the road, and I had to kill it. You ever tell a story straight? That's a straight story. You got the badge there in your hand to prove it. And I got the papers here in my pocket to show that I got the authority. Well, now, that might make you a lawman, but that don't give you the right to take what's mine. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll pay you for your horse. I take it you got $500 there in your pocket? Look, I just bought this mare. And ain't nobody, no marshal or anyone, gonna take it or buy it from me. Now, you can borrow it. Well, I thank you kindly. Very kindly, and I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna see that you get it back. How about that? Well, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna ride along with you till you find another horse. Now, look, I'm chasing after a man that's wanted for robbery and murder. And I don't look forward to having somebody tag along after me that I gotta look after. Well, I always heard that two guns were better than one. Being you ain't got a posse. I don't need one either. Look, I don't mean to stand in the way of a lawman doing his duty. But I just ain't gonna let him ride off with my horse, either. Well, then that's gonna be a mighty expensive horse if you die in the process, ain't it? It's your choice. Let's go.
paid enough for it. Are you? Don't be alarmed, ma'am. We won't hurt you. Are you Mrs. Rollins? No. No, I'm Amanda. My name is Amanda. Carter. Well, where's your husband? Well, he's gone. Dead. Dead. Well, I think you were right the first time. Now I'm going to ask you once again. Where is Ben Rollins? <laughs> enough. Can't you see she's sick? I'm gonna have a look around outside, dear. I hope for your sake I find nothing. <coughs> I'm sorry. Joey. He's a mighty good looking boy. <coughs> How long have you been sick? Oh, seems like always. It's been bad the last few weeks. Me. <laughs> Don't have to wait, little fella. We got a lady here. She's some help. Come on now. Lie back here. I got an extra blanket on my saddle. When I get back, I'll get that fire going again. Be right back. Mr. Barkley. He's Barkley. Mr. Barkley, that man's not a preacher. He's a bounty hunter. Name of Weaver. Mr. Barkley? Thank you. you wash or change him. Well, that's no trouble at all, man. These last few weeks I have, haven't even been able to feed him proper. Well, he's making up for it right now. You're good at that, handling babies. Well, I lived with a family once for a while that had, had 12 of them. Man had to kind of learn to diaper in self-defense. Rollins, I think that it's time you started talking to us about your husband. Carter. My name is Carter. Is that right? Do you know that I went all the way back to a little bitty town there in Missouri that Ben Rollins is supposed to have come from? And I checked the records in that town? And they say that about seven years ago, Ben Rollins married a girl. Her name was Amanda Carter. 
Go to a lot of trouble to find a man, Weaver. Well, our Mr. Rollins is wanted for robbery in six states. And he's wanted for murder in the state of Colorado. That's right, murder. Now, would you like to tell me where he is? That's not true. Now, my husband wouldn't murder anybody. He wouldn't? Do you know three witnesses saw him shoot down a bank clerk in cold blood? No. He's a good man. He's a really good man. He's really a good man, is he? That's why you're laying there sick, huh? All the time? Because he's really a good man who hasn't been back here in how long? Months. Did you ever think, Mrs. Rollins, that maybe he'll never come back and see you? That's right. Now, he and his gang have performed a couple robberies lately. Must got him a lot of money by now. What do you think they're doing with all of that money? Hmm? Not sending it to you, are they? There's an awful lot of women out there, Mrs. Rollins. Awful lot of women that sure like to be up next to Mr. Ben Rollins and all of his money. No! Yes. And you're laying there dying and your baby, too? No! I told you once to leave her alone. I think I know how to handle this. That's a trouble you don't. And you're not going to hound her this way. You got no stake in this. You're just a dedicated lawman, huh? You'll do anything and anybody to nail Ben Rollins. Somebody's got to do the job. Last I heard, there was a $10,000 reward on Rollins. Is that why you're so dedicated? You're not working for the government, you're working for yourself. It's legal. I got a badge. I got the papers giving me the authority to do it. Now, you can call it anything else you want to. You know, a man works all of his life wearing a badge, and he don't get nothing for it. He gets a lot of hard work and scrub pay, and that's it. Now, I go out, and I do my job, and I do it very well, and I get paid very well for it. And I do anything that I have to to get the job done. Ms. Rollins has got to get to a doctor. I'm taking her out of here in the morning. If Rollins comes back, he'll come back here. Well, that's your problem. If I wait any longer, she may die. trying to get to her husband. I done told you she know where he's at. He's gonna kill Ben. I just can't let him. Just tell me where he is. I promise you I won't harm him. I'll bring him in alive. But tell me where he is. Now get out. 
That doesn't matter, because Rollins will be coming back for his kid. Mr. Barkley. Mr. Barkley, he's gonna... He's gonna kill my husband, isn't he? He... He just won't give Ben a chance. Well, the posters say dead or alive. If your husband resists. But he will. He has to. <coughs> Oh, God. He couldn't stand to be pinned in. You just lie back and get some sleep now. <coughs> Mr. Barkley, what's going to happen to Joey? You're going to be all right. You're a kind man, but you're a rotten hand at lying. What's going to happen to Joey? I don't know. Would you take care of it for me? Miss Rollins, I can't. Please. You've got to. I, I don't know what else to do with it. Please, just promise me. <coughs> I promise. Thank you. You know, it's funny. I've seen a lot of reward posters on Rollins. Never seen a picture of him. You sure you know what he looks like? I even know what he eats for breakfast. You know, Rollins usually travels with three or four men. How do you figure on getting him alone? I could deputize you. Yeah, you could, but you won't. You don't want to have to cut anybody else in on that reward money. But I think you're going to have to work real hard for it, Weaver. Well, I'm taking the chance that Ron's going to come in here after his family by himself. Now, if he comes in here with more men than I can handle, then I'll have to wait and get him another time. You going to take that kid with you? She asked me to. What do you think Ron's going to do when he comes here and finds his kid gone and his wife dead? Well, a $10,000 reward. You going to give him a chance to do anything? There's nothing like gin When you feel all done in And when I'm thirsty for a beer Better serve it to me, dear Just put away a whole bottle. Uh-huh. Come on. Oh. There we go. I wish you could talk. It's a brand new pair of three-cornered pants you got on. The pins seem all right. It's not there. That's all I know how to do. Well, you're teething. You need something to chew on, don't you, boy?
You wait right here. I'll be right back, huh? Canada. Ain't nothing up there but trees, Ben. No lawman after my hide either. That'll be nice for a change. Not having to keep looking over my shoulder all the time. Hmm. And sooner or later, somebody's gonna be there with that wanted post in his pocket and a hankering for them 10,000 iron men the government's offered for you. Now, once I'm over that border, they can't touch me. It's been seven years for me in a <clears throat> Running, hiding, no peace. It's time she had more than that, her and Joe. I think we can get it up there. And nobody gets out, Ben. One way or another, once you're in, you're in the state. No, not me. All right, let's get ready to move out. You want my advice, Link? You head for Canada, too. Give him some extra grain, Glenn. He sure earned it. We were getting worried. I'm sorry. A couple of things held me up. Did you get the mare? She's outside. He. Oh, what's in the basket? Well, now that's a fine welcome after being gone for two weeks. Well, of course, I'm glad you're home, but what's in the basket? Well, you see, Mother. Oh. 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 Mother, she's beautiful. Uh, he. His name's Joey. What is this? Well, he was crying. Uh, teething, you know. I cut that off my saddle cinch. Oh. Well, I don't suppose a little more dirt will hurt you. Heath, I know you didn't find this baby on a doorstep. Where did you get him? Is Jared here? I'd like to ask him about some legalities. He's in San Francisco. Heath, where did you get this child? He's Ben Rowland's son. <laughs> It uh, was only four days ago. I'm 
man's name, not Joey's. Whoever buried her must have taken him. Hey, where are you going? To get Joey. Ben, if anybody can track whoever took him, you can, but... Well, maybe it'd be best if you just forgot it right here. Forget it. I don't know how Amanda died. I don't know where my son is or who has him. Just like that, forget it. Ben, look at the name on the marker. Amanda Rollins. Now, they know who she was, Ben. You take off after Joey, you're gonna walk. Hit on right into a trap. You coming with me, Link? No, Ben. You? You ever got up to Canada? You, you look join me up. What is this doing here? That child is not this. Well, what is that child doing here, then? I brought him. Meet Master Joseph Rollins, Nick. Uh, oh, uh, who? You can call him Joey. Joey, huh? What's he want with that spoon there? Well, he's teething. Oh, well, uh, how'd it get here? That's a long story. His mother was dying. She asked me to take care of him. Oh? Well, uh, has he got a father? His father's got a price on his head. Oh, wait a minute. Back up. Rollins. You said Rollins. That kid by any chance belonged to Ben Rollins? That's right. Wonderful. That man's been wanted for five years for murder and robbery. He carries six states in his pocket, and they haven't caught up with him yet. And knowing all this, you got the guts to drag that kid out and bring him to this house. I just couldn't leave him there alone now, could I? Have you given any thought as to what Rollins is going to do when he finds out his kid's gone? Well, he's been gone for quite a while. He may not be back for months. Oh, that could be. But if he does get back and he trails you here, have you thought about that? There's a bounty hunter just waiting for him to come back to that cabin. The way I see it, Rollins hasn't got a chance. Well, now, I wouldn't count on that if I were you. He's been trapped before, you know, and he's still free. You're both overlooking a most important thing. What happens to the baby? Well, the uh, sooner we get into an orphanage, the better. Joey's not going to an orphanage. And why not? Because I happen to know what it's like to be an orphan. Not belong anywhere. I want Joey to belong. I want him to have a family with kids to grow up with. Till I find one, he's staying right here. Heath is absolutely right. There will be no more talk about an orphanage. Heath is also right that Joey should be raised with children, other young children. Let's see, the Whitakers now, now, they've been talking about adopting a mother baby and the Stanleys, they, they have some young children that, I'll make some visits tomorrow. I'll drive you, Mother. Well, I'll, uh, I'll go up and, uh, clean up Audra's old room. Make it ready for him. About time someone cleaned that room up anyway. Don't worry, Heath. Joey's going to be all right.
you can just stop right there, Mr. Rollins. You carrying a badge, Reverend? Or are you working for yourself? A little bit of both, thank you. Now, just hold it right there. Now, the government doesn't much care how I bring you in, whether it's setting up in that saddle or laying across it dead. And you? Whatever's easiest for me. And that, I guess, would be with you dead, wouldn't it? Seems to be your choice. Whatever's fair. company. Oh, we're not exactly company today. Tell me, do you and your husband still want to adopt a baby? Well, we, we were thinking about it. Why? Is this one up for adoption? Oh, not yet. You see, his mother is dead, and we can't find his father. He is beautiful. A boy. Mm-hmm. Well, why can't his father be located? His father's Ben Rollins. Oh. Well, I'm sorry, but it is our busy time, uh, Mrs. Barclay. Putting in crops and all. And, and my little girl hasn't been feeling very good. I haven't any time for a baby. But you said you wanted to adopt a baby and I... Yes. Sometime. Not now? Or not this baby? It doesn't make any difference, does it? I'm sorry. The answer is no, Mrs. Barclay. You done? Yes. You'll be fit to travel in about two weeks. I'm moving now. You're not a minister? No, doctor. As a matter of fact, I'm not. I didn't think so. Preachers don't usually come in here all shut up. Well, I'll save you the trouble of asking. I'm not a preacher. I'm legally deputized to go after Ben Rollins. I finally caught up to him, and he shot me. I don't suppose you'll listen, but I'm required to tell you this anyway. That wound won't kill you if you rest. But if you insist on riding, you'll break the stitches and start bleeding again. And if you lose much more blood, Mr. Weaver, I can't be responsible for you. I'm not asking you to be responsible for me. Local sheriff could help you round up a posse. I don't need a posse. For heaven's sake, man, why not? Why not? There's a $10,000 reward out for Ben Rollins. That's why not. And you can't see splitting. <laughs> I've been chasing after that man for over a year, and I don't know how many miles. I finally caught up to him, and he shot me. No, sir, I can't see splitting it. Now... How much do I owe you? Two dollars is enough. And change that bandage every few hours. If I get the time, doctor, I will. Well, Miss Barkley, you know how it is. Well, we've got four of our own, and we uh, sure would like to take the little fella in, but... Uh... Why, what's wrong with him? He's healthy. He's cute as a button. Well, you got room. Oh, we could feed him in all heath, but... Well, he wouldn't be one hours. Well, he would be if you took him in now. Well, he's so young, he doesn't even know who he is yet. Well, now, somebody would surely find out. We couldn't keep it a secret, and they'd want to know, and... 
Miss Barclay? I understand. Well, I don't. Thank you, Jess. Not all, Miss Barclay. Come on. turned him down flame. Why? For the same reasons you talked about yesterday. Trouble. The poor little fellow doesn't even know it yet. Why, uh, why is he so pink? We've been riding around in the sun all day. Uh, shouldn't, uh, shouldn't you do something about it? You got uh, any suggestions? Uh, no, uh, it's just that, well, I thought that maybe somebody should do something about it. Well, don't worry, Nick. We'll take care of him. Come on, mother. Well, what happens, Heath, if you can't find anyone to take him in? Maybe we'll just keep him, huh? That's exactly what I was thinking. Sleep in there. Oh, oh well, that's a Just take it easy. What do you want to do? You want to maybe get up? Want to get up and sit for a while? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute now. You. Oh, backwards. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Hey? Wasn't so bad, was it? Huh? Was it worth all that crying, huh? There we go. Yeah. There we are. Huh. See that? It's all better now, isn't it? Hmm? Hey. 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 Say, uh... Uncle Nick. Can you say, Uncle Nick? Say, say, huh? We'll work on it tomorrow, all right? Huh? You'd make a great father, Nick. Oh, well, he, uh, I heard him crying here, and, uh, well, I thought there was something I could do, and, well, he seems like being held, so, you know. You're doing it very well. You know what? He, he, he smiled at me. Babies do that. Oh, no, no, he smiled right at me. I, well, I think he likes his Uncle Nick. Yeah. I believe he does. Well, that's about it, I guess. You sure we got enough baby food, Nick? You kidding? There's enough here to last him till he's 12 years old. Baby food, he? Don't tell me you haven't got rid of that Rollins kid yet. What's your interest, Jameson? Oh, words out. I heard you were all over the whole valley trying to palm that kid off on folk. I didn't ask what you'd heard. I asked what's your interest. Well, everybody knows about him. Now, we don't want him here. Well, now, ain't you the interested citizen, Jameson? If you knew anything about that kid, you'd know he's only nine months old. Now, what do you expect from him? To go to the nearest bank and stick it up with his rattle? Nah, trouble breeds trouble. You know a boy follows after his father. Joey doesn't even know his father. It's in the blood. If that's true, then you should be a blacksmith like your father. Now, uh, we let him live here, he'll wind up robbing this town blind someday. Well, now, what do you suggest we do? Shoot him like a dog because he might have rabies? <laughs> That might not be a bad idea with a little mongrel. Ah! Nick, Nick. What? 
Well, I was going to do that. Well, we just chalked that one up for little Joey, then. All right, for that, I'll buy you a beer. You're on. crew on. I, uh, do most anything, mister. Smithing, handyman. I really do need the job. Well, I guess we could use somebody around the house fixing things. All right, for a few days. Put your stuff in the bunkhouse there and check with my brother Nick. Uh, he'll get you started. Much obliged, mister. Barkley. He's Barkley. Tom Bennett. <laughs> up the windows on the outside. I can start in here if you like. Good. Might. You keep working like this, you'll run out of chores to do. It's nice to have some chores to do. Uh, these windows here. Now, the lace curtains, of course... Baby in the house, I see. For a while. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can start over there if you prefer. Yes, ma'am. He sure is a good looking boy. Mm hmm. I don't suppose I could pick him up, could I? I know how I had a son once. Of course. What's his name? Joey. Hello, Joey. Is he a good boy? Oh, he cries a little. He's teething, but he isn't any trouble. Oh, Bennett, when you're through here, Richardson would like some help in the barn. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, Joey. Uh. Do these windows over here. I get it. What do you want here, Weaver? Weaver? Bounty hunting marshal. Are you Mrs. Barkley now? Yes. Well, then I guess I'd better speak with you. I have uh, papers here that give me all the authority I need to use your house here as a headquarters. You mean as a trap? Or you can call it anything you want. I am, and we don't want any part of your setup. Look, uh, this gives me all the authority I need. Now, if you want to stand in my way, then... No one is standing in your way. You're free to go whenever you like. Mrs. Barclay, Rollins is going to be coming here after his kid. Now, I had him out on the trail, and he got away from me. And uh, he's going to be coming here sooner or later. Look, Weaver, you're wearing a badge. That makes you the law. But you're not using us to carry out your kind of law. That means you're obstructing justice, you know that. All I can see is you're trespassing on Barclay property. What does it matter as long as it gets a job done? Get the job done someplace else and as quickly as possible. Now get going, Weaver. That's Joey. I don't mean to hurt you, ma'am. I just want my son. 
I stand corrected. Mr. Rawlins. Who brought Joy here? I did. What happened to my wife? I found your wife very sick, Mr. Rollins. Before she died, she asked me to take care of Joy. Heath did all he could for her. I suppose I should thank you. We aren't condoning what you did. But Joey shouldn't have to suffer for it, as your wife did. He won't. There was a bounty hunter just here, looking for you. I saw him. Easy. Well, it's taking that baby's just going to slow you up. Mr. Rollins, think of Joey. What can you offer him? What kind of a life can you give him? What are you offering, Mrs. Barkley? Well, we hope to find him a good home with children. Young children. If that's not possible, we'll keep him. I want him. All right, suppose you get away. How is Joey going to grow up? Just like any other boy. He's my son. You don't even have one. You don't know. I do. I have three sons and a daughter. Then you know why I'm doing this. Because I care for the boy. Mrs. Barkley, would you wrap him up in a blanket, please? If you really love Joy, you'll leave him here. Give him a chance to grow up and live decent. Let him be worth something, Rollins. Sorry, Barkley. I thank you for the thought. But he's too important to me. I step over into the middle of the room. Mrs. Barkley, I'll take Joey now. got you nailed. You try to get out of here, Joey's liable to be killed also. Remember, dead or alive, you pay off. Dead is easier. It's funny. He said the same thing to me a little while ago. Miss Barkley, you take Joey upstairs, please. Heard you were a crack shot. You missed me clean. I put my bullet just where I wanted it to go. Barkley, you made a promise to my wife that you'd look after Joey. I want you to see that he ends up in, in a good home and gets all the right things. I will. And the reward? You collect it. And use it for Joey. See, it's, it's the only thing I'll ever be able to give him. I'll see to it. It's, it's not enough. Father shouldn't leave this boy alone. Rollins is dead. Isn't that what you wanted? Then what about the reward? I chased after the man for a whole year. I even got shot up. I figure I should get something. Mr. Weaver, I don't doubt that sooner or later you're going to get exactly what you deserve. <laughs> Good.
guess Rollins wasn't as bad as people figured. Certainly not about Joey. He actually forced you to shoot him, to kill him? Weaver was quite upset about the reward money going to Joey. But even he admitted it was legal. Hmm. I'll get it. Hello. Even Nick. Miss Barkley at home? Yeah. Oh, come on in. Ah. Lydia, Jim. How nice to see you. We came by to, to see about the boy. What about him? Well, we, um, we talked things over. Me and the uh, missus. And we decided, um, well, we decided that uh, we wanted the boy. At least, uh, with our four, you'd have some children to play with. Well, I think that can be arranged. You know you have some reward money coming. I don't understand, Nick. Well, Joey's father's dead, and, uh, well, the reward money goes for the care of the baby. Well, now, we'll just put that aside for the baby. Just one thing. Now, what's that, Nick? I want visitor rights. <laughs> 